Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? I do want to make a couple announcements. We have tried and readjusted the camera a little bit so that if you want to sit on some of these pews in the center, the back of your head's not going to be shown when you stand up, all right? I mean, we, we got great crowds on both sides, but I don't know if Joe's not taking a bath or is it what it is over here. I'm just kidding with you, Joe. But uh, I noticed people have sort of shied away from the middle, and some have said because of the, the when we do the Facebook Live, the back of their heads is being shown, and so we've readjusted that. I wanted to let you know. Look, I want to welcome all of you here today. We've got some that are following us fo uh, close on uh, the Facebook Live, and we're glad that uh, you, although you're not able to be here for whatever reason, that you're following us on that. We've got some out in the parking lot. We still got our radio uh, transmitter going on. That uh, is some's not quite comfortable. Uh, uh, don't uh, they? They're still uh, wanting to stay in their vehicles, and so they're out in the parking lot uh, visiting with us. And we want to to welcome you there also. Uh, we are still taking up donations. Uh, uh, shampoos and wash shaving creams you see that in in the bottom of the bulletin there uh, that's for the righteous oaks we'll be taking that up through the end of this month uh, for the the men out there if you look at the back of your bulletins I want to just uh, to, to point this out if you look at the back of your bulletins it has back there March the 7th through the 14th the week of prayer this is our Andy Armstrong Easter uh, uh, offering time. Uh, we start off with a week of prayer. Uh, these are missionaries. Day one, and it's got all the way to day eight. That will carry you through next Sunday. Uh, these are missionaries that's out in the field in the North America uh, area. And you can see that, that some of them uh, is in the Delta, British Columbia. Some of them's over in Georgia, Massachusetts, Ohio, New Mexico, Louisiana, California. Uh, the North American Mission Board. That's, this is the area that the Annie Armstrong Easter offering goes to. I hope that you're praying of what you can give. That money goes directly into the missionary's hands. Uh, it, it's not part of a budgeted item. This is uh, to give them uh, a, a little bit more money and help and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, here are some of their stories, some of the things that, that uh, 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 specifically that they've asked for us to pray for and for. And so take the bulletin home. Uh, put it up somewhere during your prayer time. Look at, at the missionary of the day. Pray for them as they're out spreading the, the word of Jesus Christ uh, in the North America area. One other announcement that, that uh, you'll see more as, uh, as it gets closer. As you know, Easter is right around the corner. It's the first weekend in April, April the 4th. Uh, it will be here before we know it. But we have looked at it, and, and I say we, me and the deacons and all have looked at it. Uh, this year, we want to do an outside sunrise service. I know some of you are saying, oh, but I think it would be beautiful. We're going to have it. We're going to start at 8 o'clock. Uh, we're looking at having it over in the, the field, the volleyball area over there. We'll be setting some chairs out. If you want to bring your own lawn chair or comfortable chair, it'll be great. Uh, that uh, we're going to start out there at 8 o'clock. We're planning on having some kind of pastries, refreshments. I think some of the men are looking at doing some kind of uh, a sausage and biscuits or something like that. We'll have coffee and drinks out there uh, that we're going to have a, a sunrise service. I, I think it would be beautiful. You, you know, and, and even in my sermon today, I will mention of all the holidays, of all the times that we celebrate, Easter ought to be the most important to us all, you know. And so we're going to have that sunrise service. After the, the service is over, we'll invite all the kids to come here into the sanctuary. Miss Heather does a absolutely wonderful job of, of telling the Easter story through the eggs and stuff. As a matter of fact, even adults, I'll just throw this out there, that if you've never heard that story, or if you've never heard Miss Heather talk about that story, come into the sanctuary, because afterwards we're going to come to the sanctuary. She's going to be telling the kids that. While we're doing that, the kids are going to be having the Easter, uh, the, the uh, youth and young adults will be hiding the Easter eggs for an Easter egg hunt. And so, uh, be keeping that in mind. There'll be more in the bulletins next week about that, and so uh, continue to be uh, praying about uh, your role in that. That is all of the announcements that I have got. Has anybody got anything else? 
We've come to worship, to praise, and to glorify our Lord and our Savior. I hope that's the reason why you're here today. Let's just go to him in a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you that we have the privilege, the honor of coming into your house to worship, to honor, and to glorify you. Lord, today as we come in, help us just to remove those outside elements from our, our minds of what's going to be going on this afternoon or tomorrow, the chores that we need to do or all those other different things. Lord, we want to be here thinking about you, of your love, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, as we get ready to enter into the song service, Lord, I ask you just to help us to look at those words that we're singing to lift them up to you as a sweet melody. Lord, I'll ask you just to hide me behind the sacred desk as I deliver a message that you've laid upon my heart. Lord, help us in everything that we do and everything that we say is acceptable in your sight. Continue to be with us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Ethan, come on. Good morning. How y'all doing today? If you'll please stand, the first song that we'll be singing today is I'll Fly Away. seated for our next song and it will be these are the days of Elijah these are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord and these are the days of your servant Moses right Righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sore, sweet are the voice in the desert crying, preparing the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like sun at the trumpet's call so lift your voice it's the year of jubilee and out of zion's hill salvation comes and these are the days of ezekiel the dry bones becoming his flesh and these are the days of your servant, David, rebuilding 
the temple of praise. And these are the days of your harvest. The fields are as wide in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet's call so lift your voice it's a year of jubilee and out of zion's ill salvation comes and now for our scripture reading good morning our scripture reading this morning is John 20, 6 through 9. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloth lying there, and a hatchet that had been round his head, not lying with, with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had came to the tomb first, went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that had, he must rise again from the dead. Let us pray. I Holy Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this beautiful day, Lord, to be in your house. We just thank you, Lord, for, for buying the way that we can have salvation, Lord, for coming to earth in human form and, and teaching and being crucified and, and being risen Savior, Lord, and descending back into heaven, Lord. We could have our salvation and our sins was laid on you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for all of this. Guide and protect us and watch over us, Lord. We pray for each and every one that's here this morning. We pray for Brother Eves as he brings us a message this morning that, that we just accept it in the way that you've sent it. Lord, we pray for our nation, our nation's leader. We pray for our military. Lord, we just ask you to be with this nation and guide and protect it, Lord, and watch over it, be with our nation's leaders. Lord, we just ask you to be merciful on this nation. God, be with us this week, Lord, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, our next song is going to be Victory in Jesus, and I just think we need to stand for this one because you can't sit down and sing about the victory of Jesus, can we? to victory 
cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me. song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me And if you'll stand for our last song, soon and very soon. be seated. All right, the special I'll be singing today is going to be All My Hope. been held by the Savior I felt fire from above I've been down to the river I ain't the same with prodigal return Oh my hope is in Jesus Thank God Today is gone. Oh, my sins are forgiven. And I've been washed by the blood. 
I'm no stranger to the prison. I've worn shackles and chains, but I've been freed and forgiven. And I'm not going back, I'll never be the same. Oh, my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday is gone. Oh, my sins are forgiven. And I've been washed by the blood. There's a kind of thing that just breaks a man. Breaks him down to his knees. God, I've been broken more than a time or two, yes. Then he picked me up and showed me what it means to be a man. Oh, my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday is gone. Yes, oh, my sins are forgiven. And I washed by the blood Oh, my hope is in Jesus Thank God my yesterday is gone Yes, oh, my sins are forgiven Oh, I've been washed by the blood Wow. If you got your Bibles, turn this morning to John in chapter 20. John in chapter 20, that's where we're heading today. And as I told you, Easter is fastly approaching, and so we're looking for that time of the, the empty tomb, the celebration. Here it is, the empty tomb, that's recorded in John in chapter 20. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone had already taken away from the tomb. So she ran and she came to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and she said to them, they have taken them away, they have taken away the Lord and out of the tomb and we do not know where they laid him. So Peter and the other disciples went forth, and they were going to the tomb. And two of them ran together, and the other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb and stopped and looked in and saw the linen wrapping, wrapping laying there. But he did not go in. And so Simon Peter also came following him and entered the tomb and he saw the linen wrapping lying there and the face cloth which had been on his face not lying with the linen wrapping but rolled up in a place by itself. So the other disciples who had, came, who had first come to the tomb when also entered and he saw and he believed. And yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. I, I, I asked the question last Sunday, do you, can you imagine what it was like that first Easter sunrise service? The first time that, that Mary Magdalene was heading to the tomb and, and as she got there the stone was rolled away. She looked in and didn't see Jesus and she ran to the disciples and told them that, that he wasn't in the tomb and, and they all ran to the tomb to see and, and they were all worried and concerned what had happened to Jesus. What did Mary say that, that they had taken the Lord away out of the tomb and we do not know where they laid him? Where, where's Jesus? I, I guess I could ask the same question to us today. Where, where is Jesus in, in our lives? 
What difference really does Easter make? You know, in society today, there's two great Christian holidays. Christmas and Easter. Christmas seems to be the greatest of all of them. There's the time that friends and family get together and we, we plan big feasts with one another and we exchange gifts and we laugh and we joke and, and we sing those Christmas songs and we have the Christmas trees and, and it seems to be the grand finale of the whole year. Can't wait till Christmas gets here. But what about Easter? If Easter had not happened, Christmas wouldn't have any meaning. If Easter had not happened, then Christmas would just be another sweet-sounding fable. If Easter had not happened, then the story of the obscured baby would just be told about something that happened 2,000 years ago in a land that most people have forgot. It's the great miracle of Easter that makes Christmas its true meaning. Sometimes we don't know all of the stories of, of that led up to that great time. And, and sometimes we think of Easter. Bill was watching his grandchildren out back playing or his granddaughter out back playing. Uh, with two of her friends and it was getting close to Easter time and so so Bill went out there and was was asking uh, his his uh, grandchildren and and her granddaughter and, and their friends do you know what Easter's about oh one of them piped up and said yeah I, I know what Easter's about Easter is the time that we go to the mall and we sit on the Easter Bunny's lap and we tell the Easter Bunny what we want and then Easter day those presents come one of them laughed and said, no, 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 no. Easter's about getting that tree out and hanging eggs on the tree. And then in the mornings of Easter, we get to see what kind of presents the Easter bunny has left under the tree and, and what kind of sweets he's put into those, those eggs. And so he was looking around and Bill looked at his granddaughter and says, do you know what Easter's about? She said, oh, yes, Papa, oh, I, I know what Easter's about. Easter's about the time that, that Jesus died on the cross. Oh, Bill started smiling a little bit. It, it was about the time that they buried him when he died, and, and they put him into a, a grave of some type, a tomb, I think they call it, and, and put a big stone there, and old Bill just started grinning from ear to ear. Yeah. She knows about it. Easter morning is the time that they came and there was a, 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 a big earthquake and, and that big stone rolled away from the, the grave. And he's thinking, oh man, she's got this down. It's a, and, and all of a sudden she said, and, and all of the people from the town came out to look and if they saw the shadow of Jesus, there was six more weeks of winter. You know, sometimes we don't get the whole story. But Easter is about the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior. You know, in nowadays, in times in society, we have people that have doubt. How can I select? What is the right religion? Which one should I choose? It's like they're going into the store and there's, there's a, a, a whole wall mount of, of religions. And there's all kind of different religions in the world. And how do I choose the right one? Uh, they have great leaders and so do we. They, they have written down scriptures and so do we. They have miracle stories. So do we. They have high ethical standings. So do we. They have a long, rich history. So do we. So how can we choose what religion would be right with all the different religions in the world? I, I tell you what we could do. We could go and we could have a, a roll call of all the different religions of the world. If you went to the graves and you started calling out, Muhammad, 
he would answer, Here. If you called out Moses, Moses would answer, Here. How about Buddha? Buddha would say, Here. What about Confucius? Confucius would say, Here. But what if you hollered out, Jesus? You wouldn't get any answers. You could holler it again, Jesus. You wouldn't get any answers. Because you see, Jesus is not in the tomb. The tomb is empty. So if you want to know what religion that you should follow, which one is the right one in this room full of all different books and religions, call out to the one that is not there. Look for the book that says Living Water. Because you see, because our Lord and Savior is not in the tomb, He's alive. He's risen from the dead. That's what makes our religion different from all other religions. We worship a risen, living Savior. The tomb is empty. You know, there's... Someone has said that there's no doctrine of the Bible that is easier to prove than the doctrine of human depravity. And, and, and we see it all around us. We can pick up a newspaper... We can watch TV. We can listen to the radio. We can think of, of, of people that we work with. And, and, and sometimes we can even look into the mirror ourselves. And we see evidence. Plain, honest people. That are guilty. That are looking guilty. And there's a reason for that. Because we are guilty. See, the Bible tells us in Romans 3 and 23, for all of sin to come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10 says that there's none righteous, no, not one. Guess what? We are guilty of sin. Uh, they, we, I found out that, that people try to, to overcome that well of, of guilt in many different ways. Some people say that, that they try to overcome the, the, the guilt of, by just being a good person. I can remember when I was up in, in another church and, and I was talking to a fellow that, that so desperately was trying to get into church. His wife came and his daughters came and, and, and I was talking to him and, and, and he was telling me, well, you know, Brother Gilbert, I'm a good person. I don't beat my kids. I don't cheat on my wife. I make an honest living. I pay all of my bills on time. I try to support my kids in everything that they do. I, I'm there for baseball games or softball games. I'm there when they play basketball. And, and, and I'm, I'm a good person. Wow. A good person. One day I asked him the question, does he know Jesus Christ is his personal Lord and Savior? I keep trying to tell them it's not a religion. It's a relationship with the Lord. And he keeps trying to tell me that he's a, a good person. He tries to, to overcome his, his guilt with, with I'm just a good person. You couldn't find anybody up there that would say anything bad about him. He was a, a good person. But you know what? Hell is going to be full of good people that's never given their hearts and their lives to Jesus. Some try to overcome their, their guilt by, by just pursuing pleasure. It's like a continuous fraternity party or a continuous party that, that they continue to drown out their guilt by doing all kind of things. They, they don't want the noise in their life to settle down. They turn to alcohol, they turn to drugs, they turn to pills, they turn to uppers and downers and artificial simulations of all kinds. But they don't want that death silence in their life because the guilt keeps coming to them. There's some that try to overcome that guilt by being religious. 
Oh, I know I'm going to church. I'm going to be in church. I'm going to have that check mark there. I'm going to join a church check. I'm going to get baptized check. I, I, I'm going to, to take communion check. I'm going to, to, to carry my Bible to, to church and I'm going to be sure that it's in my car. Check and check. I'm going to mask every time I get a chance. Check. See, religious tries to get all of those check marks. It never has that open relationship. Mary and the, the disciples had that open relationship with the Lord. They knew what it was like of being close to Him. They had saw Him be beat and hung and, and die upon the cross. They knew where they put His body, the physical body of Jesus that was dead. He was in the tomb. And, and, and they were going to Him uh, that, Monday, uh, that Sunday morning. Mary Magdalene was going to carry those extra spices to, to preserve His body, not even knowing how she was going to get the stone rolled away. You see, to them, it wasn't about a religion. It was about a relationship that they had with their Lord and Savior. And I can tell you, we can try all the ways of getting rid of that guilt in our lives, that guilt of sin, but until we have that personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, we'll never get rid of it. You can't be good enough to erase your guilt. You can't laugh enough to erase your guilt. You can't pray enough to cover up your guilt. It can't be done. On Easter Sunday, something miraculously happened. Our Lord and our Savior rose from the grave. Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, we'll look up 1 Corinthians in chapter 15, verse 3. Christ died for our sins, and, and, and that's a true statement. But he died for our sins so that he could rise again. You, you remember what he, he told his disciples. He told his disciples that, that, that I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Well, guess what? That was on this side of the, the empty tomb that he told them that. If Jesus had not died, the Romans and the Jewish leaders would have been right. It would have been Jesus, just a misled religious leader that died on Calvary. See, without Easter, Good Friday wouldn't have been so good. And yet the death of Christ forgives us of our sins only because of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. See, His blood covered us and made that atonement for us. He rose again so that He could sit at the right hand of God interceding for us. If it had not been for his death, it would have been to no avail. We would have still been like the old Jews and, and, and carrying sacrificed lambs for the atonements of our sins and, and having them poured upon the altar. We talk about him being the Lamb of God and being slayed once and for all and for all of us. But if it wasn't for his resurrection, it would have been of no meaning. If Jesus would have still been in the tomb, we wouldn't have been able to celebrate Easter as a risen, living Savior. E Easter's coming. And all the days that's leading up to, to Easter... And I'll be talking about that in the next few Sundays of what all has happened. But you know, even with the guilt that people have, do, do we realize that there's still people that are lonely that surround us?
People ask all the time, where can I find a friend? Where can I find someone who cares for me? Well, if you look around here in Meridian, we, we have over 37,000 people in the 2019 census. You think with that many people around, how can somebody be lonely? Wow. Sometimes we just get in the same routine of life. We get up in the morning, we get dressed, go to work, we come home, we read the paper, we unwind a little bit, we eat supper, we watch TV, we go to bed, we get up and do it all over again. We live in a fast society, and, and we try to live in a private society. We, we build fences around our house. We have shrubs that build up. We have people that move in and out of our neighborhood, and sometimes we don't even know the people that's moved in and are gone. Nowadays, with this uh, COVID, we're scared to get out and to visit. We're scared to go to our neighbor next door and, and welcome them into the neighborhood. And, and we try to do it through social media. Now, social media is great, and it's a great thing. You ever tried to make a new friend over social media? Wow. It fascinates me watching TV and they have this uh, 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 dating service that they've come out with. I'm just too busy. I don't have time to meet people. So I'm going to go on this dating thing over here and try to find somebody. Wow. We live in such a fast society. But what did Jesus promise us? He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll stick closer than a brother. And, and, and see if we can realize that, that Jesus is there for us. We'd never be lonely again. What did Jesus do? He reached out to the unreachables. He touched the untouchables. Jesus never met a stranger. He loved them where they were. He didn't judge them. He didn't judge people walking up to them by the color of their skin or if they had a long beard or a ponytail or a, 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 a war tattoos on their body. Jesus didn't, didn't judge them. He, he loved them where they were. And See, if we're going to be in that relationship with Christ and we're going to walk with Him, we need to be like Him. T.S. Eliot made this statement about hell. Somebody asked what was hell like, and T.S. Eliot made this statement. It's a great void of a land of ugly nothingness. We might imagine it as a, a place in the universe where it is utterly, totally, eternally alone. You scream and no one hears you. You holler for help and no one is there. You cry and no one hears your voice. You're falling, falling, and falling through the darkness. And you're alone. That's what hell is like. A place of utter loneliness. Wow. You see, if we have that personal relationship with our Lord and our Savior, we're never utterly alone. If we quit worrying about the religions of the world, and we look for the true living water of the world, And we get into his word and we read and we, we see Jesus and we fall in love with him. We're never alone. We're never lonely. Over centuries ago, 
in the book of Job. The question was asked, if a man died, would he ever live again? Job in chapter 14. And I think that's one of the greatest questions of the, the center question that, that Easter answers. Easter answers that question. Have, have you ever been around a dead person? You ever felt their skin? Have you ever looked at them? I can remember years ago I drove an ambulance for uh, in Columbus, Mississippi. I was an ambulance driver up there. That's one of the most horrifying things. You never get it out of your mind. Because death feels terrible. Unnatural. But when you look at Jesus' word, when Jesus comes back to life, and he stood there with his disciples, and he told them, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come again. That where I am there, you may be also. And we read that one day, one day that, that God's going to look over at Jesus, His Son, our Savior, and say, Son, go gather my children. And the Bible tells us that the dead in Christ will rise. And we're all going to live again, and we're all going to rise into that heavenly home, and, and, and we're going to stand before that judgment seat. And if we've got that personal relationship with Jesus and we've lived with Him and we've walked with Him and we've talked with Him, when we get into that courtroom and they look at our sins and Jesus is going to say, Dad, I paid that fine. It's all clear. Welcome home. So the answer is yes. Yes. Yes, if a man dies, he will live again. We're going to live in that eternal home. As we read in the Bible, there's not but two places that we're going to, to go when we depart this earth. One is in that heavenly home with Jesus, and the other one is the eternal flames of hell. There's nowhere in between. There's not a, a degree in there that, well, I'm just, some days are going to be good, some days are going to be bad. Well, I've been a good fellow. I've lived all my life as a good guy. And guess what? The Bible says there's not but two places. If your life belongs to Jesus and you've asked him into your life to be your personal Lord and Savior and you're saved and you're covered with the blood of Jesus, that you'll live in that eternal home with him. But guess what? If you've never asked him into your life, that's the only unforgivable sin that I can read from anywhere in this Bible from cover to cover. There's nothing that you can do that the blood of Jesus will not cover you. There's nothing that you can, can say that the blood of Jesus will not cover you. There's no sin, no depth of darkness that you can go that the blood of Jesus will not cover you. The only unforgivable sin that I can read anywhere in this Bible is not accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But Lord... Didn't we clothe people? Didn't we feed people in your name? Lord, didn't we? You were a good fellow, but depart from me, for I never knew you. I've been told that if you go to the Holy Land and you go into the, the tomb where they laid Jesus... That you can walk in and it's sort of almost a, a two-room section. And the first part of it is a sort of a wailing room that you can go in and that you can, can go in and, and sit and mourn. And in the back part, back part of it is, is hewed out a, a, a slab where they lay Jesus' body. 
I'm told that when you walk in the tomb that sometimes, and, and, and especially uh, uh, some of the taller ones, probably not me because I'm short, but, but you have to sort of duck your head and you go in there and, and it takes your eyes just a, a few minutes to adjust from the bright light outside into the darkness. But I'm told as you turn and leave that there's a plaque that's hanging up there. And the plaque says, He is not here. He is risen. What a statement. He is not here. He is risen. So my final question for each one of us is this. Jesus died on the cross. Now it's your move. Jesus rose from the dead. Now it's your move. God has answered the deepest question in the simplicity of the empty tomb. Job asked, if a man dies, can he live again? The answer is yes. But the question is now, what are you going to do? It's your move. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for today and for the blessings that you've given us. For being able to come into your house and to read and to study your word and to, to look at the empty tune and to answer that question, yes, we can live again. Lord, if we have that personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with you, Lord, uh, today here, I don't know what you put on each person's heart, but Lord, you do. So in a minute, we'll have a hymn of invitation. And Lord, this altar is going to be open, and it's open for you. Come and to lay your burdens upon the Lord. There may be some of you here today that's never accepted him as Lord and Savior of their lives. That's never uh, made that commitment to allow him to come into your life. I beg you to make that commitment today before you leave. Ask the Lord to be Lord of your life, over your life. Many of us have done that and we've strayed away. We've not been as close. We've, we've not put as much emphasis on the relationship of Jesus Christ. I, I ask you to get that relationship right. Maybe there's some here today that's not members of this church and and the Bible tells us that we need to join a local church and be part of that community and to help spread your word maybe you just need to come and to place your membership here whatever the Lord has laid upon your hearts this invitation is for you I'll be down front I'll, I'll put my mask on be obedient to his word Lord Jesus, continue to mold us, make us after your will, not ours. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.